Right, brilliant. Thank you so much, Michael. Uh, as I was saying before, uh, I had forgotten that this was today. And yesterday you sent me a, a message and I thought, ooh, 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 I actually promised something that I don't know if I can deliver. So I spent the whole day writing this and I think, honestly, I've nailed digital marketing for the next 10 years. That sounds incredibly pretentious, but it suddenly makes so much sense. I've been doing this for 25 years and today I just thought, ooh, now I've understood. So I'm really excited. So I am the brand tip guy, as you said, and I should, as we all should, be able to tell my story, my life story, what I can offer people through my brand SERP. And the brand SERP is the search engine results page for my name. So this is mine from a couple of years ago. Uh, John Mueller from Google calls me Mr. Knowledge Panel. Uh, I focus on knowledge panels because that's the foundation of what Google understands. And what Google understands is the foundation of what it presents to the subset of its users who are your audience. I'm currently living in Paris, but that's not true anymore. I moved to the south of France recently because it's sunnier and we get better food. But you can see that from my brand SERP that I was in Paris, Ile de France, France, uh, although I'm British by birth. I was a voice actor, a cartoon blue dog, Boua, the blue dog, alongside my ex-wife, Veronique, the yellow koala. And you can see here a video, some songs, and IMDB. Part of my brand SERP, part of my Google business card, part of my life story that I can present to my audience through Google. I was also a punk folk musician, the barking dogs. I played the double bass, once again, a video and also the Barking Dogs in the site links for my own website. So that's my 90s, 1990s, last century career. I've got a groovy podcast, which is intelligent, interesting, interesting, excuse me, and fun. And I think it's really delightful to point out that I listen to my own podcast, not because it's me, but because the guests we have share so much super delightful, insightful information, I've learned so much from the 250 episodes that we've done. I'm an author, as you said, The Fundamentals of Brand SERPs for Business is my book. I write for Search Engine Journal, Search Engine Land, and multiple other media outlets. But most importantly today, I think, I'm the CEO and founder of CaliCube, which is a SaaS platform, courses, and a done-for-you service for the CaliCube process that we're going to see in a moment. Even Google understands that I'm the brand SERP guy. And I think that's key, is that I get to choose what Google understands and displays and presents to my audience about me. And that is what the CaliCube process is all about. I've been working on this for 12 years and I initially started because Google initially said Jason Barnard is a cartoon blue dog and I wanted to make sure that it said to my audience today what my audience today needs to hear or wants to see which is Jason Barnard is a digital marketing expert and I've spent the last 12 years developing the CaliCube process so today we're going to work through the reasoning and the techniques behind it and go through a case study. So the plan is there are three points of view on your brand SERP. Your audience. What does your audience see when they Google your brand name? Google. What does Google think about you? Because what Google thinks about you is what it will show on your brand SERP. It's Google's reflection of the world's opinion of you. And then you need to be incredibly, incredibly interested and focused on your brand SERP because the brand SERP is not only the key to your audience and to Google, but also to your own digital marketing strategy, which is what we're looking at today. So I would argue that your brand SERP should be the starting point, the driver, and a major focus KPI for your digital search strategy. Why have I put search in brackets? 
because it actually affects every aspect of your digital strategy. So it's not just search. We're using search and we're using Google to understand what it is we need to do, how we need to prioritize our work within our own digital strategy. And that's where we come to the final point is that you're gonna future-proof your digital strategy. When I talk about search engines, that's what we knew from before. 10 blue links, then universal search, but now we're looking at answer engines. Answer engines, what is that? That's ChatGPT on Bing. And that's now search generative experience on Google. They aim to answer the question right at the top so people don't even use the search aspect. And then assistive engines, that's for the future. We don't know where that's going, but definitely already we can see that when you ask Google Home, who is Kelly Cube? Who is Jason Barnard? It answers correctly because our strategy, the CaliCube process, has already made its place, made its point, and ensured that these machines understand who we are, what we do, which audience we serve, and how we want to be re representative. And generative AI is hugely important. Once again, we don't know where it's going, but it's learning from knowledge graphs, it's learning from large language models, and being able to educate, and I say educate, these machines is our responsibility and something that we have to do in order to face the future. And that's the CaliCube process. How does that sound, Michael? Me too, actually, because <laughs> I spent the day thinking about it. And I wanted to show some results because somebody the other day asked me for some numbers as to why people would be interested in this. Because looking at your brand SERP, the search engine results page for your brand name, seems fairly pointless. It doesn't seem like this hugely great win that you're gonna get for your boss or for your client. But when you build out from the brand SERP using the CaliCube process, you get results not only on social media, on media and across the web, you also get results in traditional SEO. And I wanted to show this guy, he's a delightful, delightful chap, Robin Bourdie. I spent two years with him implementing the CaliCube process. He initially had a 37% year-on-year drop in SEO traffic, and we worked through the CaliCube process, which is based on knowledge, recommendations, and now generative AI, to push him from minus 37% year-on-year to plus 33% year-on-year. And that's a huge turnaround. And as he says, and I love this, they turn my strategy around, profits are up, and I feel serene about the future. He feels comfortable. That's hugely important. But there's more. If we look at this lady here, uh, Marie-Julie Le Guen, I've been working with them for several years, and she makes the point that I've made them autonomous. They have a modulable, modulable digital strategy that they can now manage in-house and I no longer need to coach them, consult with them, give them reports. I don't work with them at all anymore and they on their own are now driving 163% traffic increases on SEO year on year. And that's not even counting all the social media, all the branded traffic, all of the 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 articles that they've got and the traffic they're getting from review platforms such as Trustpilot. And that's huge. It's These are strategies that any marketer can implement. Marie Julie is super smart. Her team are super dedicated and they are absolutely nailing it and they don't need an agency. And from our perspective, we have obviously done this the best. I've baked this into the entire CaliCube company, 330% traffic increase year on year in year two. And that's hugely important is year one is setting the stage. Year two is when the growth really starts because you've baked this into your business. So the CaliCube process focuses on your brand SERP. And I've been arguing and talking about brand SERPs for 12 years now. Brand SERP, the search engine results page for your exact match brand name. Because it gives you insights, 
your audience will Google your name before they do business with you, and it's also a reflection of how good or bad your digital strategy is. So to be really, really, really clear here, it's the exact match brand search. So in my case, it will be Jason Barnard or it will be CaliCube. For you, it would be Michael Cortez. There are multiple problems around your name, as I understand, but also my name of ambiguity. That's not the topic for today. That's quite a detailed and difficult topic that needs to be dealt with in specific ways. And we can talk about that later. And we look here, this is Microsoft. Looks great. It's their Google business card. And I love the irony of we're looking at Microsoft's Google business card. And I will bet my bottom dollar most people see Google's representation of Microsoft rather than Microsoft's representation of Microsoft on Bing. And those results can be more or less unconvincing, more or less negative, and more or less inaccurate, as we can see here. CaliCube's doing actually a pretty good job for a small company with only 14 people. We look pretty impressive next to Microsoft who employ tens of thousands of people. And on the right, you have what we remember from days gone by of 10 blue links. That really, really doesn't look impressive today. I would not do business with them. I don't know who they are. I have no idea who this company is, but that doesn't encourage me to do business with them because I expect to see something more like what we have for CaliCube or if we're a huge corporation, what we see for Microsoft. And remember that what we see for Microsoft is natural. That's really easy for huge corporations to do. For mid-sized companies or small companies like CaliCube, we can actually look just as impressive as Microsoft. And it isn't, really isn't rocket science. And then for people, same thing. I look almost as famous and impressive as Bill Gates. He's got $25 billion and I have a thousand euros in my account and every month I struggle to pay my bills. But in the middle there, I look like I'm just as famous, just as important, and just as interesting, credible as Bill Gates. And that is hugely important because if somebody Googles my name, Google my name now, J-A-S-O-N-B-A-R-N-A-R-D, and you will think, yeah, he looks impressive. Have I done as much as somebody like Rand Fishkin, who we all know? No, I haven't. I haven't built multiple businesses. I haven't done all the stuff that he's done. And yet I look at least as impressive as Rand Fishkin, probably more. Now, there are three reasons that your brand SERP is incredibly important. It's incredibly important for your audience, as we said. It's your business card. Clients, prospects, investors, partners will all Google your brand name, your personal name, before they do business with you. What they see is your Google business card, and they are using Google because they trust Google. So that is Google's recommendation. You need it to look positive, accurate, and convincing for your audience. But it's also important for Google. It's Google's assessment of the world opinion of you. And you mentioned EEAT earlier on, experience, expertise, authoritativeness, and trustworthiness. If Google is showing positive results, accurate results, it understands who you are, and it understands that you're an expert, you're experienced, you're authoritative, and you're trustworthy. If it's showing less good results, obviously, it hasn't understood and or it doesn't think you are credible. I use the word credible, they use the word experience, expertise, authoritativeness, and trustworthiness. I like the word credibility because it's much quicker to say. <laughs> and it's also important for you because it's a window into your brand's digital search strategy. If you search your brand name now, think about what you expected to see, what you actually now see, and what you want to see. And you need to move from expectation to reality, and then on to how do I change that reality to become exactly what I want? I need Google to present my message to my audience in my words with my brand narrative. 
And while I'm doing that, I will change Google's opinion of me and I will also improve my overall digital search strategy, but actually my digital strategy. Because by changing Google's opinion so that it represents me to my audience in a way that I wish, I necessarily have to improve my engagement with my audience across the entire web. So by definition, improving your brand SERP is a marketing virtuous cycle. I come from a world of SEO and all of a sudden now, honestly, I'm a marketer. SEO is third on my list. Branding, marketing, SEO in that order. SEO is simply there to package what I'm already doing as a marketer and a brand manager for my audience and for my company. Doesn't mean to say it's not important, it just means to say it's not my primary focus, it's only third on the list. But I can use SEO and Google to improve my brand SERP. I will necessarily have to improve my digital ecosystem. Everything about me online, improving it, making it more consistent, making it more engaging for my audience, and that will be reflected in my brand SERP. So if you have Googled your brand name in the time that I've just been talking from two slides ago to now, you will see, does it represent me? Does it represent the effort and money I'm putting into different elements of my digital strategy? If it doesn't, then you're doing it wrong and the Calicu process is the way to set that right incredibly simply as we will see. Google's opinion will improve as you improve your brand SERP. It will understand you better, it will understand how you serve your audience better, and it will understand your credibility, your EEAT throughout, which is incredibly important today and moving forwards. And every day you look at your brand SERP and you see, does that reflect who I am, what I do, which audience I serve, how I serve them, am I credible? Has Google understood? If Google hasn't understood, then I'm doing it wrong. Everybody's happy. When you get that right, Google is happy. It understands who you are. It understands which subset of its users are your audience and how you can serve them. It understands that you're credible as a solution for the subset of its users who are your audience. You're happy because you improved your content strategy, your marketing strategy, and your users are happy because they're seeing a consistent message from you across the web, and especially when they Google your name just before doing business with you. Next question, what KPIs? Somebody asked me this and I was wondering, KPIs, KPIs extremely important, very difficult for me to create or understand or present, but actually it's really simple. The greener, your brand SERP in the CaliQ Pro platform is, the more you have a positive reflection of Google's opinion, of the world's opinion of you. That means to get that greenness, you need to improve engagement. And you can see here over geo regions, we have more engagement, more positive in Australia and uh, France than we do in Canada and the US. And that's hugely important is that the way Google represents you across different geo regions will change vastly because it's trying to serve the audience in that geo region. So if you're an international company or even a national company, you need to track multiple geo locations in order to understand how it's representing you to the local audience, which is something a lot of brands overlook. Then you need control. You need to take control. It's not, oh, can I have control, please? You need to grasp control. You need to take the initiative, get control. As you can see here, and this is over time in the UK. Uh, CaliCube went from less control, a B on our control score, up to A, where we have almost total control. So control will drive quality. Engagement will drive quality. And then, how do you set the priorities? KQ Pro, once again, offers you the opportunity to identify priorities, and it's really simple. You start with market number one, the US in this case, and you start from the top of the brand set and you work down, and you improve everything. You start from the top of the right-hand side and you work down. 
you improve everything. Then you move on to market two, market three, market four, market five, and you will see that your entire digital strategy, your entire digital ecosystem has improved across all of the different geo locations where your audience are engaging with you. So CaliQ Pro allows you to not only measure and track and improve recommendations, it also allows you to improve track and uh, move the needle on control and sets you the priorities working from top to bottom, which is idiotically simple when you look at it on this screenshot. Building a digital search strategy from the brand SERP outwards, this is the CaliQ process. This is what I'm here to talk to you about. Hold on to your hats, this goes really, really fast, but you can watch this again, you can download the slides and you can use the learning resources at the end. CaliCube.com absolutely full of free resources. And I think that's a really important point here is that I think we have a process that will work for any marketer. We cannot possibly serve the entire world. So we are sharing this completely free on calicube.com. If you want to learn and figure out how to implement this for your company or your clients, it's totally free. Go to calicube.com. You will find all of the resources that you need. Obviously we have a paid option, but that isn't our focus. Our focus is to bring SEO, digital marketing, into the realm of accessibility for any marketer on earth. Three types of results. I love this. This was two or three weeks ago. Generative AI in search is totally new and I can now implement it uh, in every presentation I give. The right hand side of Google's traditional search results is its knowledge. The left hand side is its recommendations. And now right at the top, they put the generative AI, the search generative experience. So we have three aspects that we need to deal with now for search, assistive and answer engines, generative knowledge recommendations. And we have a case study and this is obviously CaliCube, but the reason I want to use CaliCube is because I have built the CaliCube team over the last two years purely to implement the CaliCube process. So we are our best students, as it were. A lot of digital agencies will say, well, I don't work on this because I don't have the time. I'm working too hard on my clients. I agree with that. I understand that. It's a problem that we all have. Uh, an English saying is the, co the cobbler's children are the least well shod, i.e. the cobbler's children have the worst shoes. I would like CaliCube to not be the cobbler's children. We work on CaliCube, Elisa in the CaliCube Pro team who deals with our clients, who deals with the agencies who use the CaliCube Pro platform, works on CaliCube as if it were a client. So I'm paying CaliCube to work on CaliCube with the CaliCube process. And I think that's hugely important because as you saw with the numbers, plus 330%, that's full implement implementation. And I fully expect to at least double our search traffic and triple our income over the next couple of years. Importantly, knowledge recommendations and generative AI are all interdependent and each one affects the other. You can't simply say, I want to work on one aspect, knowledge or recommendations or generative AI. You need to work on them all because they all play off each other. They're all using the same index. They all share multiple algorithms. So you can't isolate one completely. So the CaliCube process is a holistic approach that any marketer can learn. And this is Marie Julie again. Jason coached the UBG team for several years and helped us build a modular digital search strategy that we now manage in-house. I highly recommend his strategies. Working with him is a no-brainer in my opinion. And that's because we built this entire strategy, knowledge recommendations, generative AI, into their existing team and encouraged them to take on additional team members to serve this search but wider digital strategy that's driven enormous increases in traffic, but also business. So we can start with number one, knowledge. I'm starting with knowledge because knowledge is power. 
Knowledge is the foundation of everything for us as human beings and now for Google, Bing, and so on and so forth. So, excuse me. Teaching Google is what we're looking to do. We want to educate Google about who we are, what we do, which audience we serve. And that starts with the entity home. In order to get a knowledge panel and to control a knowledge panel, you need an owned entity home. The entity home is the page that describes on your own website who you are, what you offer and to whom and why you're a credible solution for Google's users. That's the about page about your company. If you don't have a dedicated page about your company, create one today and explain who you are, what you offer, to whom, and why you're a credible solution for Google's users. Then you need to make sure that you corroborate that information on trusted, authoritative third-party sources. Consistency of that information is absolutely key. And then you signpost using either links or schema.org markup from your entity home out to these corroborative sources so that Google understands who you are, what you do, who you offer that to, and why you're a credible solution, not only from yourself, but from all of these different corroborative, trusted, authoritative third-party sources. And if you want to know more about that, search how do I get a knowledge panel using the CaliCube process on Google, and the answer is there. Three simple steps. Anybody can do it. And it's important also to note that authoritative sources are not generalized. So we all think about Wikipedia, but jasonbarnard.com is authoritative for myself, for the Barking Dogs, the group I talked about earlier on, the punk folk group, and also the Buwan Kuala cartoon. So a very, very, very weak site like my own can be authoritative for a specific topic. So don't focus on the big hitters. Focus on what is going to be authoritative for your entity in your given situation. And in my case, Blue Wine Koala, the Blue Dog Yellow Koala, or the Barking Dogs, my punk folk group, I'm an authority. That makes sense. And importantly, and that does really bring to mind, and I put it at the top right-hand corner so everyone can see it, one size does not fit all. People tend to think that it's all Wikipedia, Wikidata, that IMDB will always trigger something. But if you're in IMDB, but you're not actually an actor or a podcaster or a, um, in the film industry, IMDB is actually not a good source to use. You need to use the sources that correspond to your entity type your geo region and your industry. Social profiles, easy peasy, links in the footer or the header of your website, plus schema on the entity home, or you can just add links if you don't want to use schema. Social profiles are the easiest thing to trigger in a knowledge panel once you have one. Links in the footer or the header are often just enough. As long as you link to them and they link back, preferably to your entity home. The entity description, super tricky to do, but if you start your, semantic tri uh, your description with a semantic triple, CaliCube is a digital marketing agency, blah, 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 that's a semantic triple. Subject, verb, object. Write clearly, name check related entities and attributes in the text that you've given, and consistency across all first, second, and third party websites is vital. If you're not consistent, it will simply not show a description. First party websites, websites you own and control, second party websites, social media profiles, crunch base, things like that you can edit yourself, but you do not control the website. Third party websites, any website that you have no control over at all, inc.com or entrepreneur.com would be great examples where I cannot intervene directly. And obviously third party websites are the most powerful for Google as long as they're authoritative and as long as they're relevant. Images, consistent visual brand identity, logos, colors, and wording, you should be doing that anyway, plus consistent usage across first, second, and third party websites, and some image SEO. So once again, we can see that we're looking at branding, we're looking at marketing across multiple platforms, and then SEO comes third. Number one is my brand, number two is my marketing and my outreach, number three is my SEO, 
brilliantly reflected in a knowledge panel. Now Yoast, we worked with them two or three years ago on their knowledge panel. It looks much better now than it used to. Those attributes that we don't yet have for KCube, those are going to be triggered by structured data, clear copywriting, semantic HTML5, third-party sources, and knowledge bases such as Wikidata, Wikipedia, IMDB, Crunchbase, and so on and so forth. Entity statements, just think factual people also ask. Entity statements are basically people also ask presented as fact in the knowledge panel. You need to control that, and you would control it in the same way you would control people also ask or get into people also ask or trigger a featured snippet. So if you have strategies and techniques for that, those is what you would use, and you would want to aim at the factual information about your company or about companies within your industry that Google would want to show to your audience. For example, parent, fun uh, parent company revenue very typically questions or entity statements Google will show. People also search for, Google is showing cohort analysis. It's showing who it thinks is closest to you within a cohort. If you don't know what a cohort is, it's your industry group, it's your competitors, generally speaking, although it's a little bit more nuanced than that. But you should be looking here. People also search for at your competitors. And if it's wrong, Google has misunderstood which market you're in, who are your competitors, who is your cohort. Any questions up till now? <laughs> okay, right, yeah, we can, we can come back to that at the end. I've seen you writing notes, which is why I thought you might have something to say. Right, number two, recommendations. I think this is hugely underestimated. Number one, update your homepage. SEOs say to me all the time, I rank number one, what do I care? You do care. That's a branded message. And I'll take Amazon as an example. I think it was Kevin Indig who pointed this out. Is their meta title on their homepage was cheap books, hi-fi, and more. And they only changed two years ago to Smile More, Pay Less, Amazon. Smile More, Pay Less is a branded message. Cheap bikes, hi-fis, books is absolute rubbish trying to rank for those general keywords. The home page is for your brand. It's for people who know who you are already. And that's the first place that you should start to improve. CaliCube, specialist in brand SERP optimization and blah de blah de blah. Uh, we could improve on that. We're working on our branding. And that's the interesting part about the CaliCube process is we've been two years working on it and we're still working on it. And I can still see here that we could do better. Number two is those rich site links. Takes up a huge chunk of real estate that you control. Google will typically show about Teams, login, contact us. And these pages are typically pages that don't have great meta titles and descriptions because they're not SEO focused. And worse, they don't have content. Write a small paragraph about what you can do, what people can do with this page, why they should use it, why they might want to engage with you through this page. Log in and make your brand SERP better. Log in and start the CaliCube process with us. That would immediately be better than just password and email, login. You're speaking to your audience right there on the brand SERP. So that would be number two on my list. Number three, pick a social channel. Twitter gets those lovely Twitter boxes. I'm not sure that's going to last with Elon Musk now in charge. YouTube is another opportunity. Uh, TikTok is a potential opportunity, even Facebook. Um, all of these social channels, you would want to look at them and say, what can I do with this? Are my audience engaging on this channel within my industry and within the CaliCube Pro platform and within the CaliCube process? It's super important not only to look at what you're doing, but also what your industry is doing. What your industry, which social channel, sorry, in your industry will dominate. So pick one, focus on that get it working. These Twitter boxes took us six months to get from no account at all to Twitter boxes that look absolutely awesome and we have total control over what's being shown. 
Client reviews, scary. I don't like asking clients for reviews because I'm scared that they're gonna say something negative. Take it on the chin, learn from it. If they're saying something negative, then you're doing something wrong or you're not serving the right clientele. Work through that and make sure that you've got these positive reviews that demonstrate what it is you're actually doing for people, what problems you're solving, what pain points you're relieving. And if you can do that, Google will rank them on your brand SERP and you look impressive to the next set of clients that are about to come through the door. Further down the brand SERP video strategy, here it's all YouTube and you'll notice these are all self-made videos. We've made videos about CaliCube and they're all ranking. Google wants to show our audience what we have to offer them and if we are the best source of information video wise of what they can expect from us, Google will allow us to display our wares, as it were. All of these are ours. They're all on YouTube. YouTube obviously dominates, but you can also use TikTok, Facebook, Twitter, Vimeo, or even your own site. So don't just stop at YouTube. Look at where your audience hangs out, where they're engaging, and also, if you can, what we do here is pull in the videos onto our own website. It hasn't worked in this specific case, but we could have people clicking through to CaliCube's website instead of clicking through to YouTube if we had done our schema markup better. So, an improvement for CaliCube there. Then pick a so second social channel, work on that. You can immediately see here that it's ranking. Google understands that our audience is hanging out there, they engage there. Our cohort is focused on LinkedIn. LinkedIn is a huge, huge platform for B2B. It wouldn't be for B2C. Make sure you're focusing on the right platform. Don't just focus on LinkedIn, because I said it today, because one size does not fit all. In this case, pick a third social platform. But it could be a profile, it could be Crunchbase, it could be Wikidata, it doesn't matter. Whatever's there, whatever is reasonable to be there, whatever is gonna be helpful, valuable, and interesting and engaging for your audience, work on it. And as you can see here, we've worked on images and I think that's something that's vastly underestimated. Make sure your visuals are incredibly impressive. That looks cool. And that isn't difficult to do. And then additional own sites. We have multiple sites. Uh, this is our podcast site. As once again, we have a visual that looks pretty cool as a square. And we control this so we control the message. Controlling the message with owned websites, the ultimate, ultimate control is what we call doing a Disney. Because the Disney Corporation control their entire brand set with their own websites. I don't advise doing it, but it is a lovely example of how much control you can have with owned websites. And we can see at the bottom the related searches here. This is holistic and topical. And if people talk to you about topical authority, this is a delightful way to be able to start to get an insight into that. And you can see here clearly on the left-hand side, Google has understood the products and the services we offer paid. And on the right-hand side, it's understood what topics we're expert in, Knowledge Panels, Knowledge Graph Explorer, and indeed a partner, WordLift. So if you're working with CaliCube, you may well want to work with WordLift because we're complementary. So you have incredible topical understanding and relationship understanding through related searches. That's something you would definitely want to track. And now the fun part, the modern part, the new part, only two weeks old, generative AI in search, Google search generative experience. How on earth can CaliCube have this result just one week after Google launched this? And the answer is the CaliCube process sets you up for success in generative AI in search. You can see here the brand voice represented in the description. That's all to do with consistency, writing a great description, making sure it's consistent across the web, making sure the entity home is recognized by Google, which feeds back to the knowledge panel that we were talking about earlier on. And we can see that it understands we're a French software company, not just a software company. And we use AI to help digital agencies. What we've got there in that top line is exactly what we do 
and who we do it for and what we then do because we help them to manage digital ecosystems for their client. And I'll bet my bottom dollar if you search your company name on Google's um, search generative experience, you won't see something quite that impressive. We offer at the bottom online video courses to impart blah, 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 blah. This is a great, great text. We wrote it, but, Google, but people, when they search our name, think that this is Google's invention and Google is recommending us. And that's vital because Google, people trust Google. They search on Google because they trust Google and this looks like Google's own words. It is Google's own words, but it's actually just our own words reworked in Google's manner. Next is the entity home. Make sure that Google's understood your entity home. It will almost always put it into the generative AI at the top there. Client recommendations, Google's super keen on that. It wants to push the recommendations from clients. Obviously, if you've got negative reviews, it's gonna put negative reviews there. You want to identify the dominant review platforms within your cohort and prioritize those. You will also often get reviews from journalists. Social profile, Google will tend to want to put a social profile there because it wants to give you the opportunity to engage with the company. So identify the dominant social channel in your cohort once again and identify, uh, uh, sorry, and prioritize that. And this is the lovely part, questions that bring the prospect down the funnel. Uh, Fabrice Canel from Bing, who's the uh, principal project manager at Bing for Bing Bot, and now I think even more than that, was mentioning or was talking to me about the idea that Bing Chat and Generative Eye on Google, the same thing, the aim is to bring the user down the funnel. So you need to provide the, the answers to common questions through an FAQ, clear service pages, and a well-structured website so that the machine can understand how you want to bring your users, your audience, down the funnel. And they will simply repeat your own funnel if your funnel is clear enough. That is key, and it's hugely simple to do but it takes a lot of time, it takes a lot of resources, and you need to do it in a strategic manner. So we finished. So the reminder now is that the CaliQ process is your universal future-proof strategy. You need to build your digital strategy, let's say digital search strategy, but it's actually your entire digital strategy from the brand SERP outwards. Start with what your users see when they Google your brand name and work out from there using that as your prioritization list and as your KPI. You want to communicate with Google. You want to communicate knowledge. You want to improve the recommendations that it's giving your audience about what's helpful, engaging, and useful to them. And you want to feed the generative AI to make sure that in all of these different aspects, Google, and Bing will always represent you to your audience in the way that you intended. And by making sure they represent you to your audience in the way you intended, you're necessarily gonna be building up the knowledge and the recommendations and dominating and controlling that search result for your own brand name. But also I would argue becoming the center and the focus of your cohort and dominating through what a lot of geeky people, such as Kure Gubur, who is an absolute genius, call topical authority. Topical authority is being the center and the reference of your cohort. So I would argue you need to work on both topical authority, but also becoming the center, the focal point, the absolutely perfect representation of your cohort for Google and for Bing. So the CaliQ process, in my opinion, is the future of digital search. And that was my afternoon, was thinking, wow, I've just understood after 25 years. Here are some resources. Uh, there are case studies and FAQs on calicube.com for everybody. If you're more adventurous, join our brand SERP support group where we talk about knowledge panels, brand SERPs, the CaliQ process, generative AI, Google, Brand SERP support group or CaliQ Brand SERP support group and you'll find it. And then if you're an agency, we have the SaaS platform where we 
help you or the platform helps you to optimize brands across search with CaliQ Pro. If you're interested in working with us as uh, to help you with your CaliQ process, please do just contact us. We do work directly with clients, although that's very limited. We have a limit of 20 clients at a time. And that was it. Thank you very much.